controls the space, controls the universe. Yeah, it's rich and bunly goodness. Do you remember when you lost your passion for this work? I invited another friend, I hope that's okay. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to my channel. I'm Lorena, Lorena Creole, bringing you that spice to sci-fi and pop culture analysis. And welcome to another episode of the After School Special Show, where we interview guests who could meet us for the noon show. So you know what? We just go ahead and uh, meet them after school. So it's a lovely Saturday. And we're looking forward to our guests, plural this time around. So it's going to make for a really, really interesting uh, after school special. So speaking of interesting, what's going on fast, Stephen? Uh, good morning. It's been an interesting couple of days. Um, how are you? Ah, doing good, doing good. Enjoying this brief burst of <clears throat> springtime weather before the Arctic Snarm. kicks back in. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we're doing that up here too. Yeah. But you, uh, I'm going to Time for my uh, 60 seconds of simping. You look extra lovely today, boss. How are you? Are you doing all right? I know you have a great spring weather popping. You look very cheerful, oh. like you haven't looked at Twitter yet. You're like, I feel happy before I see the cesspool. It's great. Except the tank hasn't exploded. I'm in a great mood. Don't touch that pastry. I'm going to eat that. It sounds great. No, sorry. Oh, let's see. A little see. hyper. Um, it's like I, I to Twitter. And then I forget Twitter exists right now. Yeah, Twitter, yeah. <laughs> it's a garbage fire, but you know what? Uh, sometimes it's fun to grab some popcorn and just watch it. Yeah, but that's good. Um, I, I've totally forgot we were going to have more than one personality today, and I'm kind of excited. This is a, this is our first actual group view, group interview. Um, yeah. Yeah, we were, we were supposed to have one before, but that didn't quite work out. We got half of the group, which which was cool. But this one, um, we've got part of the group, but we've got more than one. So it's going to be very, very, very interesting indeed. I'm looking yeah, forward to yeah. it. Um, also, to the viewers who are going to see us in the future, it's kind of be like a flip-flop. We're going to go about for an hour doing the normal lunch table routine. Then we're going to do a swap where these people uh, throw misogynistic questions at us for about 30 minutes. So I'm looking very forward to having my toxic masculinity tested. Um, I have my legs spread wide on my chair. I have my uh, phaser set to don't care. And this is going to be a fun, fun show. Absolutely. Sorry, I'm making this awkward as hell right now. It's great. <laughs> oh well, dude. You know, you do what you do. That's why the people come mm -hmm. to watch. <laughs> so, I'll tell you what, our guests are all under the Geek Time TV label. So let's see. We have Keith. We have Edson, and we have Spoiler Pete. How are you guys all doing? Good. Good. Great. Thanks Enjoying so much. This for lovely weather. Us. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm not looking forward to when it starts getting cold again. <laughs> yeah, cold. It won't be long though. Yeah. So they so they say it so won't be long say, before but... complaining about the heat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now the heat I the heat I don't complain about. Uh, I have a quick question. I don't either. I have a, I have a quick question for you three uh, people. I can call you all gentlemen, right? I'm not going to get like canceled for wrong terminology okay. before we get the show started. Eh, no. Why the hell not? Oh, I forgot my pronouns. Damn. Um, <laughs> sorry. Well, it's okay. My pronouns are uh, fat, don't care, and why do you? <laughs> it works. But it's great having you guys here. Okay, you guys great. all look like a happy Red Bulled out team. It's great. Uh, two cups of coffee for me. But. I'm talking about coffee. the guy, the guy who keeps product placing in the lower corner here. <laughs> oh man, yeah. That reminds me, I have an energy drink in my fridge. Um, a a 
bang energy drink that's called um rainbow unicorn oh interesting oh yeah really? does it, when you open it up does it sound like uh optimus prime in my head roll out <laughs> in my head it does and i freaking love it yeah it's like that big and Apparently everybody's getting it off the shelves at Target. I can hardly I can hardly find it. But it's so awesome having you guys here. Um tell you what, let's see. We'll go with the question we usually start with. Well, we have two baseline questions, so it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. So, first question and we will actually start with uh Keith and go I'm looking here go clockwise around. What are your memories of lunchtime at school? Oh, the lunchtime at school. I, I watch your lunchtime shows all the time. So I'm always thinking. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I always said back room. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a couple of things. Um, but, you know, I was in high school, especially. I ate the same lunch every day until Friday. I ate a cheeseburger with three chocolate milks. And then Friday, the cardboard pizza, because you have to. Um but I remember I, there was this kid I went to high school with, and I won't say his name, but mm -hmm. I used to draw cartoons of him on the desk, the kind of unflattering cartoons of him. And he'd come to lunch and go, if I catch the guy, and he knew I drew cartoons. He'd go, if I ever catch the guy who's drawing these things, because he would always have a class after me, and he'd get there, and there would be the picture on the desk. And mm -hmm. he couldn't figure it out. And it was... <laughs> <laughs> Can't be the guy that was just sitting at my desk. No, it must be no. someone else. It must be the Every teacher. Day at lunch, the he'd teacher. be like, "If I catch that guy, I'm gonna kill him." And it was me, and like he never figured it out. And I'd be like, hey, "That sucks, man." Yeah, yeah. Wonder who. Well, that is. Well, well, Keith, you know that you know the whole saying, right? With a lot of comics and like fantasy and sci-fi, right? The best villains are always held, he always hiding in plain sight, right? That's so right. you kind of yeah. nailed it. Oh yeah, yeah. it reminds me of. Um... That special episode of the Powerpuff Girls called The Fight Before Christmas. I don't uh, know if you guys ever saw that, but they had like the permanent naughty list and like oh, Jenny yeah. Tartakovsky and the other producers had their siblings on the permanent. Oh, naughty that's, that, list. that's great. <laughs> that was oh, one of no. the best trolls I'd ever oh, seen. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> it was freaking awesome. Well, that was my analog lunchtime trolling uh, for four years. <laughs> Wow. Guy. He never figured it out. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Well, if, if he watches the show one of these days, surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry you didn't figure that part out. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, Ed said, same question to you. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't remember ever eating anything, you know. <laughs> so, uh, I, what I mean is I don't remember the food. I, I, I It's possible I might have gone through school without eating. But <laughs> I, it, it's, it's, I always remember walking in that room and you could – you could clearly see they're always in the same places. Like you got mm -hmm. the, the the sports jocks all like all in one area, and then you have the the people who talk about pop culture. I, I didn't want to say geeks, but you know, <laughs> uh, in the other area, then you have all the all the uh, you know people just trying to in the you know all the trends of all the fashion trends in other area. So as soon as I get in there, go right to the <laughs> to the geeks and pop culture area, and right away you just start in on the. The, you know the Lord of the Rings or the Dune or the Star Treks and the Star mm -hmm. Wars and it's it seemed like just a running thing every single every single day just like that. Which is kind of how we met, Edson. Yes, exactly. Yep. I don't want to. I don't want to admit how many years ago that was. Uh, ah. But yes, we, we we did meet in high school back then. Yep. yep. Like three yeah. lifetimes ago. Yeah, about that. Going on uh, four. <laughs> so you, you so you're saying you've known you guys about. So when did the misogyny start then? Oh, around <laughs> wow yeah we we definitely have to hear that story how, how you guys how you guys met that's gonna be cool we're gonna get to that so okay so spoiler pete same question to you although oh, i feel boy. like i have a i feel like a flaming mo should be coming at me that's <laughs> <laughs> your background Lisa, <laughs> Lisa. Later on, it'll be bear o'clock <laughs> uh but uh no I, I i didn't get along well with a lot of my uh my my uh fellow students at, at school i got picked on a lot um so i i never really ate ate lunch with a lot of people i was off by myself however in high school starting in the sophomore year uh there was another group of misfits that i, I kind of fit in with so basically we would much like 
much like Edson here, uh, would sit and talk about whatever happened to be the, the nerdy topic of the day, be it D&D, be it Star Trek, be it Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, I, I spent the majority of my time eating my lunch in the hallway with a bunch of other weirdos. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> that was me on occasion when I wanted to get away from people. Most most notably, get away from uh, get away from the mean girls, or just get away from people. <laughs> See, the, the good thing is though, you guys were at the point. If you did get beat up, you weren't the the nerd or the dork getting beat up by the other nerds and dorks. If you were that tier below the nerds and good the dorks, you, yeah. you 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 really need to second guess why. <laughs> white jeans and a black prodigy t-shirt wasn't getting you places <laughs> yeah yeah good point <laughs> so it's pro it's possible that we were preparing for being on this on our youtube channel from since starting way back in high school then <laughs> maybe that's an interesting point mm -hmm. that's interesting that's interesting because um it, it's Once funny, a geek I... always a geek i always say <sighs> Where I work at in IT, that's like IT, science, or engineering. That's heavily dense geek territory. And it's kind of like if you don't know it, you're kind of an outcast. It's it's an interesting <laughs> flip. The inverse, how, right? Yeah. Yes. They have turned. Totally. True. Turned completely. When you'll just hear stuff get dropped. Like for me, I had like a long black um, sweater because it was always cold. And, you know, I called that like my Darth Vader cape where I'd walk in there. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm here to get you back on schedule. <laughs> nice. And so many quotes. And then one day I was just like, you know what? Now I know why Darth Vader had to force choke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, now it's all completely you know, clear to me. But it's like you would pull stuff from Star Trek, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, especially engineering. We're just like, no wonder Scotty never told people how long it would take to fix something. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, maybe Scotty just didn't know, right? Like, because that song makes a lot of sense. Scotty didn't know. Scotty didn't know. Scotty, well, didn't Scotty know. says you always have to multiply your uh, repair effort by a factor of four, right? Right. But he was also wearing a red shirt, so at any time he would just be expendable. So it was kind of hard to take him too seriously when always every time you saw him in a red shirt. <laughs> True, true. Scott, but Scotty was Scotty was the exception. You know, I tell people it's like he was the one person. It's like Kirk would not try to, you know, to to mess with and just like, you know, but let him get let him get stuff done. And I remember in next gen, um, when he asked he asked uh Jordy, you didn't tell the captain how long it would really take, right. did you? Right. And he's like, Yeah, <laughs> and you just hear the collective face palm going on. He's like, You can't do that. You have to make him think that you are the hero as the engineer. <laughs> that was brilliant. Over delivery, yeah? I Our love it. captains are like children. They only yeah. they only want to hear what they want to hear. <laughs> yeah, but that Dyson sphere it was the Dyson sphere, right? Yep. Was it that episode? Yeah. And dude, mm -hmm. that was brilliant. I think so. Yeah, like I, one thing I can say when it comes to like the TNG and that when they introduced like the older characters like Scott Scotty, it, it was one of those things where not only did it fit perfectly within that season, it fit perfectly within the time of uh, the TOS. Sometimes not being remembered as much as it was and it brought mm -hmm. back people going who was that well he was from the original and then you could introduce a whole new thing it was one of those segues that could open up not only talks with your family but your friends and branch out mm. more star trek and, and those then episodes worked where the generation yeah. really failed that's why else i love barkley uh. to a certain point because barkley like he had his own ptsds and ways of coping but when he that one episode where he got the uh the intelligence inv in ingested invested oh, into him and one. he took over oh man yeah, that was good. The thing, the thing I wanted, to, I wonder if you guys ever watched Voyage. Do you ever think that because the intelligence lasted and lingered, he had some kind of after effect? Do you think that's what helped him branch communications with Voyager because of that leftover intelligence? Yeah, probably. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I think he wow. evolved a little bit. That's an interesting point. You're probably thinking harder than the writers did, but that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm thinking harder than most Marvel writers. Sorry. I, you <laughs> know, yeah, Voyager. It, I. Uh, mm. It was like we didn't know it was turning at that point, but yeah, they kind of. That's kind it of it was crappy though at the beginning. I honestly have to agree. Like Voyager was boring at the beginning. Oh, yeah. it was that's why I didn't watch it. 
Yeah, Kazon looked like it had it. layered cake on their head. I couldn't get into it, and I had a bunch of you know female nerdy friends who were like, "Oh, oh, we have a female captain." I'm just like, "That's not doing it for me." <laughs> and yeah. I was in, and I seemed to be in the minority at that time. I'm like, "It's it's not it's not doing it for me." No. That was the first. Uh, what, that was the first Star Trek series where I had a, like a start and stop. Like I would. I really got to get into this. It's Star Trek. You know, it's going to be then two or three episodes. All right, let me stop for a little. Like, it's not. Then I go back. And then by like the third season, oh, it's starting to get a little interesting. Let me just keep going. Mm -hmm. But the, the uh, it took a while. It took a while. The characters were a bit underwritten. And uh, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it, 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 by that time, too, there was so much fatigue from the Rick Berman Star Trek. But now I'm going back and watching Voyager again because that was the one series I didn't watch a whole lot of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Compared to Discovery in Picard. It's Why do you have to say those names? Oh, We're going to have Kurtzman show up like Voldemort. God. What are you doing to us? <laughs> I refuse to watch Discovery. You know, we're actually going to get back to that discussion because I got to ask the other baseline question. But yeah, that's a good oh, sorry. We're, we're going we're gonna to get into that. So second question. All right. What kind of pizza square around at school? Uh, uh, we had square. Okay, he's fired. <laughs> round, uh, round. I didn't make it. Oh. It's just what we had. I don't care. You're fired. Oh, you're asking what what kind of pizza you had back yeah, then? Yeah, which one oh. you had at school? Yeah. Oh, back then oh, it was yeah. that it was, was square. Yeah, it was square. Both yeah. fired. All of them fired. <laughs> Cookie, the cookie sheet. We didn't he want it that way. He's only saying that because square pizza's winning. It's like, been winning for a year <laughs> almost. This is bullshirt. <laughs> but they but found the most best. I said bullshirt. <laughs> I said bullshirt. <laughs> no, it's like that's, but you can see the conspiracy though. Yeah, you're you know, American. That right. Square pizza that they want to make because it's easy. Oh, and they're, mm -hmm. you know, it's too lazy because, yeah. you know, there's the round pizza takes work to do. They don't want to do it. Right. Do you, do you know, the best curated, corrugated cardboard, put the marinara sauce on it and mm -hmm. threw some cheese on top, and you're good. Well, they had to recycle. That was the best way to teach the kids to recycle. Here, eat the cardboard from your last test. That's mm -hmm. how, where do you think the textbooks went? <laughs> It literally tasted like nothing, but it was still the most awesome thing because it was pizza day. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. cheese and cheese and sauce it like, and it if was you're like lucky, you had if you're lucky you had maybe two slices of pepperoni on that sucker. Oh, you That's had right. <laughs> We well, barely had toppings. It was always cheese. Was it real pepperoni, though? Back in yes, my day, we didn't know. have toppings. We had cheese, and we loved it. And we walked up 50 feet of snow with dinosaurs and no SJWs chasing us. Exactly. And a lot of them, they didn't cook it enough, and there was still the, the cheese, the the, the yeah. threads of cheese weren't melted yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, while we're on the topic of cheese, because this makes a perfect segue, what is the first fandom or franchise that got you into the, the pop culture of dorkiness. I saw Star Wars when it came out three times in the theater. I was eight years old, so I just dated myself. Um, and it just it <laughs> changed my world. I mean, it was the most incredible thing I'd ever seen. Um, I mean, Now, I what do you think about our show? No, I was kidding. <laughs> well, your show took it to the next level. Oh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Start with Star Wars, and then you have to be all. No, that that's 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 cool because I always tell people um, I didn't see. Yeah, I did. I saw Empire in the theater. I was really Bastard. I was really young. My dad brought me, and the only thing that I can remember is that the lines were so long that we didn't we couldn't get in because you know my dad couldn't buy tickets ahead of time, so we had to wait like another two hours to watch it. And I remember waiting in line, waiting in line, waiting in line, and I'm like. Is this film going to be freaking worth it? I'm sitting out here. There's nothing to do. You know, I have to use my imagination before I go in and see this movie. And we finally got in and we saw it. And I was freaking hooked. And not only was I hooked, but I went to school that Monday. And you know what the topic of discussion was? Is Vader really Luke's dad? Holy crap. You had like books that were coming out about it you know all this merch that was coming out about it people had you know their empire strikes back lunch boxes and stuff like mm. that it was just crazy because that's all that people could freaking talk about well, lorena i skipped school i was 14 when jedi came out and my mother was cool enough to let me in, in, skip school with three of my friends and we went at about eight in the morning got in line we were seventh in line the mm. line ended up wrapping around the theater we got in the mm. newspaper and everything uh to see jedi and uh that was it was 
an experience I'll never forget. And the sad wow. part was we picked up the books the night before. So I read the novel while I was in line. I knew what was going to happen. So that kind of wrecked it. But. I, I did too. Cause <laughs> I, my parents couldn't afford to take us opening weekend when it came See. out. So I went to the bookstore and I got the novelization and I sat there and I read it, but it's cool. Which It's interesting what you say about skipping school because when revenge of the Sith came out, the whole IT department were like, you know what? We're not going to be here around <laughs> two o'clock. Um, we're all going to be at the IMAX theater across the street seeing Revenge, you know, Revenge of the Sith. So don't schedule anything. And it was like a freaking ghost. And we're like, boom, we were gone. And they're like, where are they? <laughs> they're, they're all over there to go see Revenge of the Sith. You couldn't find us. We were like, don't schedule any meetings. And too bad the person who was the lowest on the totem pole that had to do support because we were gone. We, oh, that's the non nerd, right? You left the one non nerd behind. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't deserve to come. You stay here. You stay here. You're gonna have to see it at five o'clock after we've all gone and seen it. Nice. I remember one of the sci-fi magazines that came out back in the eighties, right around you know between Je um, Strikes Back and Jedi, and there was an article in there talking about the Clone Wars. You know that that was just like a, mm. a mentioning of the Clone War, and what I guess one of the theories um, was that um, Boba Fett was a clone of Darth Vader, and I was like, I was like obsessed with that with that, or I carry that magazine everywhere I went. It's like, do you do, do you really think this is true? And it was, it's like Wait, I was Star obsessed Log? with it. Yeah, I think it was Star Wars, and it was like they were Ooh. saying, you know, clone, you know, Clone Wars. Uh, you yeah. know, when you see that, you know, we thought we were going to get the Clone Wars, like you know, yeah. three yeah. years after Jedi. <laughs> It was like, oh, it's gonna be exciting to see Boba Fett. I, it's mm -hmm. like he's 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 a clone of Darth Vader. It's gonna be. When are they gonna find that out? Like, <laughs> Starlog was our internet. Yeah, yes. Starlog. Right. Yeah, that was I it. I think I have some. Uh, I think I have a couple of them in the in the back. I may run back and grab one just to I show know. people. Because for you kids who don't know what Starlog is, I'm gonna go grab a copy and bring it out here in a little <laughs> in a little in a little bit. But uh, nice. that is that is cool. I think every kid can remember the first time a Star Destroyer or an X-Wing flew in front of them with the IMAX speakers, oh, and you're sitting in front of the big absolutely. screen, and your whole body just shook, and you're just sitting there going, this is something I've never seen before. Yeah. But um, that's, that's really cool. Uh, you guys look like not only generations of your evolution, which is weird because you guys look the same in similar ways, so it's kind of funny. <laughs> Pete's like the end. Uh, Edison was the first, and, Ke and like Keith's in the middle. That's the way I'm looking at it. It's like watching Mythbusters as they age. Yep. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. We're all a couple of years apart in age. Edison is two or three years older than I am, and Pete's two or three years younger than I am. So, yep. so they, suckered, yeah. they suckered you. You're spot they on. Suckered. All right, cool. That's cool. Yeah. You guys look great. As much as the, you're doing product placement for the two at the bottom, how much did you pay them to put the logo just above their camera? <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> but um, the, I, I don't want to answer. Go I'm trying to do banter because I don't want to take any of the good questions before uh, Lorena gets back, wherever she went. I think she went so, to get Starlog. I know. I can read. I was just being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even see that. I just guessed. I did uh, not see it. Yet. But um. How do you guys, how did you guys actually get started? Oh, hold on one second. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but In... I'm going to show people. Oh, oh look at that. Wow. Uh, I miss that magazine so much. Me I do. Too. That in Fangoria? Oh, man. Yeah, because yeah. Fangoria had all the hot, all the horror stuff in it. That's yeah. right. And Cinefantastique. Nice to... Remember this... Cinefantastique? Cinefantastique. Yeah. Yep. Those were, uh, that was the trilogy that you would yeah. pick up. That's unbelievable. At the, at the bookstore. I just I have to go back through all of these. But yeah, wow. this is what you circle around trying to get. Is the new one in? Is the new one in? Is the new yes. one in? Is the new one in? Holy crap. So yeah. We'd read them until they fell apart waiting yep. for the next month's yep. issue. That exactly. and that's and that's yeah. what that's what happened. This one, oh my gosh, the back is like warped because I <laughs> tried to like fix it. And they would have like letters from fans and you know and stuff and stuff in it. It's yeah, that was way 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 back in way back in the day. But yeah, well, we didn't have internet. That's awesome. But we had Starlog. How? <laughs> I'm trying to figure that. Um, you guys probably hung out a lot as you guys got to know each other, right? 
Oh, absolutely. So when you guys got beat up, was it all together, or did you have to take turns in line? I never got beat up, believe it or not. Um, I, I was I I fit in with every crowd in high school. I was friends with jocks. I was friends with the nerds. I was friends with musicians. I was friends with everybody. So you're lucky, man, because uh, <laughs> for me it was like <laughs> Forrest Gump every night after school. Gotta get home before they see me. Mm. Never but um, what made you get started on YouTube? When did you guys start com- com- uh Well, uh, it's, making it's, yourself. It's kind of funny because we've been watching all your channels for years, right? And really, yeah, oh, wow. yeah, and, yeah. Uh, years. Yeah. I've only been around since last year, man. I well, I mean, you know, I'm going. I'm, you I'm like, like everybody. You. I, I know. I'm just stroking my ego. It works, yeah. right? No, I'm so like, so like, geese and gamers, Gary, the Kingpin, Gary, all the way down, mm-hmm. and right. um, anybody who was talking about the stuff we're interested in. It's always, you know, how YouTube will just send you down this rabbit hole if you just leave it on, and right. um, and I usually put it on my TV and do stuff and listen. Mm-hmm. And, um, when when COVID happened, uh, Pete and I are in production. And we lost all our work and we're sitting around and we, we, what we like to do is we'd watch your channels and like go get pizza or wings or something and just talk about what we heard on your stuff. Oh my God. Did you hear what Midnight Ted said? Holy yeah, exactly. cow. Exactly. <laughs> and, exactly. And so when the thing happened, we were actually starting a podcast and uh, Jude, Jude Abuda mm-hmm. from our, our show said, uh, what well, we should do YouTube instead. You guys are wasting, we're wasting our time with the podcast. No, and, you're not. Well, believe our audience, the, the difference in the audience response has been like phenomenal. YouTube is, we're growing so much faster. Mm-hmm. And we, we I, I sat back and I got the idea one day. We were actually calling our podcast Pizza and Pop Culture because a friend of ours owns a pizza restaurant that we all hang out in. And it's kind of like Cheers, mm-hmm. where you go in there and the customers, the employees, the, everyone's talking about this stuff. And I keep telling him he should rebrand as like a cool, like a nerd pizza place yeah he won't, he won't do it um so we were going to do the idea was to do the show in there and have customers jump in and all kinds of weird stuff and mm-hmm. and lockdown That's awesome lockdown That's happened cool. and we had to reinvent ourselves and the pizza guys kind of lost interest so i was at the gym one day and i was thinking about like midnight's edge and some of these other things and i got this idea of maybe do a network so we could have a podcast and call it like geek time radio and we have youtube and call it geek time tv and we could put up blogs and call it geek time press and just have like this whole entity mm-hmm. so it worked out that all that stuff was available so i quickly grabbed it um and some of the people that were on the podcast like pete and edson uh and jude came came with me so that that was kind of the idea because I, mm-hmm. I was thinking about how midnight's edge andre it's andre's channel Yes. But like Tom will go do his own thing and Rob will do his own thing and Andre. But, you know, like so that any one of them could pop up as Midnight's Edge. And I was kind of thinking that might be the quickest way to grow the channel, too. If we have a bunch of us Mm -hmm. under this one umbrella, it's my channel, but these guys are part of the crew. So they're also my super chats, too, when that comes and they're just still part of the crew. I'm not messing with you right now. <laughs> but, the, but the thing I was trying to say, I didn't, mean, chats, I didn't yeah. mean to sound rude either, Keith. What I'm saying is, like, are, are there any plans of doing, if you have your old podcast recordings, have you th- guys thought about uploading the audio and just attaching video to it and bringing back your old podcast as there, YouTube content? Our podcast is still active. It's, it's okay. We're on all the podcatchers as Geek Time Radio. Awesome. And, and, and the old episodes are part of that. I never changed. Like, I didn't start something new. I just changed oh, okay. the name on Anchor where we post them, and it just rippled through. So the mm-hmm. old ones are still there, and but we haven't recorded like a standalone podcast in months. So I've just been mm-hmm. doing our Tuesday night streams as audio and putting them up for now. That's awesome. Uh, well, here's a question to ask you guys. So think back to like the first YouTube live stream that you ever did. Kind of walk us through how you felt about doing that. Um, kind of like the myth because everybody makes missteps. Gary still kicks himself out of uh, Gary's awesome. Friday night nights. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't feel bad I laugh because well. Gary and I are months apart in age, so we're I'm kind of oh. oh, right, all right, I gotta just, do this. Now. It's just it's just freaking it's just freaking awesome. So, kind of like take us back to like that first live stream that that you did, kind of let us know like kind of what you're feeling about doing it, any apprehensions about the live stream and kind of like the lessons that you learned from that first stream. 
well, Pete was part of the first one with me. We decided last summer when San Diego Comic Con went virtual, I was like, you know how we could kind of get started here is, and this is one, when we were pizza and pop culture on a different channel. Um, I said, why don't we just cover San Diego Comic Con every day? We'll do like a reaction live stream because mm -hmm. I've, I've been watching Friday Night Tights all the time. And so I kind of had the idea of what to do. Uh, but but I'll tell you, Lorena, you hit that go live button and your mouth goes dry. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, I get it. Get it's because be witty. And the worst part is, is when you forget to turn on the volume on your channel because you want to you hear your voice for the first time. Like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm used to that now. And the other thing I forgot, I did pull to Gary several times where we'd start talking and I'm like, oh, I forgot to hit go live. Oops. You know, <laughs> we're, we're doing a show with nobody. It's not even on. Uh -huh. so, how many times did I do that, Pete? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'd run the countdown and we'd start talking and then I realized, oh shit, I never turned it on. <laughs> so 15 minutes later, run the countdown again. <laughs> Try to remember what you said. Mm -hmm. Fail miserably. But it was oh daunting. But so when we we went to the new channel with the geek mm -hmm. time, we'd already done half dozen <laughs> or so. So we, <laughs> I love your avatars. <laughs> um, uh, can you share that quickly? Because I want them to actually see where it came from. Because yeah, they'll remember that, Gary. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, my gosh. gosh. So I just took my goatee to it. Yeah. That is. What in the fresh wow. hell is that? <laughs> I that know, is Gary I, before The Last Jedi, before the dark times. Wow. Before thought, the naughty dog. I thought Steven had like manipulated the photo and I thought it was a fake picture. He's like, no, it's it's, it's actually Gary. No, I even made a video with this picture That's and it's incredible. just it's just me screen recording uh in uh, 3D paint and it's all pinned the beard on the neurotic and it has me trying to lift this PNG and put it on his face. Nice. Oh amazing. my god. That's I thought crazy. it was fake, Isn't that crazy. Yeah. <laughs> He's never going to talk to me ever. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, so, Edson, how did you uh, feel about that first step? Or I mean, I was I was pretty lucky that that uh, I was brought into it because by the time I started, it, it was um, when Keith had organized this Tuesday night, the, the current stream that we have is mm -hmm. on Tuesday nights. And he's just, he took care of all the technical parts. I mean, he just kind of send me the invite and I'm like, I'm just kind of a guest on here because all I have to do is show up and click right. the link. And, and so that part of it was not, took away most of my nervousness. Uh, the only thing I was kind of obsessed with is making sure my background wasn't embarrassing or anything like that and uh, getting my mic mm -hmm. to, to go on. And, um, you know, like, as he said, trying to get my mouth, uh, you know, not dry. <laughs> <laughs> when I started talking, well, that, I got over that pretty quick because we we did. It, it's like you said, it was more like a conversation with friends, and it was just mm -hmm. it turned into that so quickly that it, it just became so comfortable doing it. Uh, just talking about anything, it was just as if we were just getting together in someone's backyard for a barbecue. We just talk about the things we normally do, just uh, in this forum. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's so cool to hear that because, um, like, I know some folks who are like, well, should I live stream? Should I not live stream? I'm worried if I live stream, I'm going to screw up too much stuff or or whatever. And I tell them just like, you've got people who've been doing this stuff for years and they're still going to screw stuff up. <laughs> but no one really talks about kind of like what that feeling is when you start, when you start live streaming. So for some folks watching this who are kind of like not sure what to expect, what kind of tips do you guys have for uh for live streaming hmm. um, anybody uh, i i actually um there's a newer channel um called the time prophet and he was actually on the on the twitter dm saying exactly like he's nervous he doesn't know what to do mm -hmm. and i think the best advice that we could all give him is don't feel like you're performing just feel like you're he, hanging out and having do, a conversation. Do, do you want to know a secret keith mm-hmm He's the one who made that Steven Seagal VTube avatar for me. Really? Mm -hmm. Free. Yeah. He saved me about 600 to to 1000 bucks US because that's how much it costs usually for a basic model. Oh. So Profit did that, and I was blown away. So that's why I, I use as much as I can, but I try not to get him like people attack him for free stuff. But he, he is a good dude, and he is going to get comfortable. The same with Sven, you know, the Nordic naked right. Um, Viking, right? Uh, even you guys talking a little bit, every time they see a new personality talk and they share their experience, you're letting people feel comfortable enough to take that first step. And um, it's not easy, 
because you think you have to cross a line to be a different personality when people just want to hear you talk from the heart and keep your genuine self on the screen, whether it's the avatar talking like I am manipulating comics division, or it's you and your friends, plus your missing crew, just talking about your favorite pizza and why the revenge of the Sith was so great. It, it all depends on how welcoming your voice is and how welcoming of respect towards the other people in your chat and on the panel's opinion matters as a conversation yeah. point. Authenticity is what I try to stress to everyone. Involved. Me too. I'm My rule is to, to always, yeah, my rule is to uh, to have fun, but don't be fake. I love making people laugh mm -hmm. over making people always see the serious issues that's going on about how they called us misogynistic. And you know what I mean? All that crap. I'd rather have fun because people yeah. need fun. Yeah, yeah, I kind of add to that, um, and I will because I think they're just hilarious. Like a couple times I've had streams where I'll just invite some folks on that I know already. And we will just like stream and just act like complete idiots for three <laughs> hours because we uh, did that. I think it was um yeah your pre thousand celebration pre yeah pre thousand celebration and also like my pre birthday stream because I had the dark castle on there too at the same time and we just went for three hours just like drunk was so mean on that channel <laughs> he was so mean he called me a bully on that stream and i'm like don't do that you have a following they're gonna believe that i'm a bully and they're gonna cancel me he's like i don't really mean it guess you yeah. said it. but it, honestly <laughs> yeah it was, it was just too much fun because we it, it literally it was just like we're just all sitting there just laughing doing stuff you have people in the chat the chat comments are just oh yeah they're freaking hilarious because they're just going along with what's going on on the screen and we're just chilling and being ourselves yeah somebody picked that up for him i tried to look at target but uh, oh, i think mongo sent that mongo sent that to me for everybody free. up i got wow. mine right around christmas time thank god but that's the I thing though it. i i had people I in the comments it. From that telling me oh you're not gonna get it good luck it's already gone you should have thought about it sooner i'm like okay here it is now well, Four, two months never, later yeah, yeah you yeah. never you never know i mean just for me personally i didn't i stopped collecting figures like a couple of years ago i think and here's what did it yeah i did because I, I stopped with uh i think it was with, with star trek deep space nine i stopped with collecting figures after, after oh then uh speaking of ds9 you should tell them who what fan club you were in charge of and see if they geek out okay um i'll make this interesting whose fan club from the deep space nine actors do you think i ran their fan club avery brooks any other i think guesses? he cheated uh, cool. no i just went straight to the top um right any other guess <laughs> Yes, um, if I was to guess the second one, I would say Michael Dorn. No, he oh, called her homeless. Visitor. She called him. No, she called him homeless. That was different. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to come back. I have another story about Michael Dorn too. But Edson, you but, said Cork, right? Yep. Armin Shimmerman. Armin Shimmerman. Spoiler, Pete. You. I say uh, I'm going to guess Nana Visitor. <gasps> that was that was that was my third. Oh. You know what? Keith is right. They Brooks. Oh, really? That's the obvious one, of course. Yeah. I <laughs> well, for the longest time, he didn't have one. Really? I, I believe that. Yeah, he's kind he of did, private, right? He yeah. didn't have one. People didn't really approach him about one. I just kind of threw it out there just to do stuff. And some people were like, you're never going to get him. You know, when there was a lot of back chatter. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. I happened to meet him at a creation convention because I had written him like a couple of times and all that. Mm -hmm. Immediately, he knows who I am. Wow. He, brings me, he brings me up on stage and I, I have to find that picture because it's so funny in retrospect. I look like the biggest freaking fangirl in the world. But <laughs> at that time, he just seemed completely untouchable and he was just like the coolest person. So it was, you know, was running, was running his fan club and I got to see some stuff from star trek i like some stuff that i didn't freaking like but he was That's really awesome. he was really cool yeah and i got to talk nice. to like nana visitor she all of them knew who i was when i would drop on the set like to come to come and uh to come and visit and it was just it was just awesome but speaking of deep space nine yes i believe on um you know what i am what's that the 23rd the 23rd you of what? what? Maybe, maybe I will drop it 
in here because this isn't going to uh and going to air until the 23rd you know what instead i'm going to leave people guessing i'm going to drop it in the private chat who's going to be who's going to be our guest talking about deep space nine Oh yeah, we got Anita Sarkeesian because we really wanted to feel ourselves be turmoiled and anguished. That's what we got. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. yeah, Ooh. yes, nice. yes, and um, also who's another person? So those are like nice two people. Right, excellent. Said, oh, that's awesome. yeah. So we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be talking season one of Deep Space Nine. It's uh, I love Deep Space Nine. I think it's the best Star Trek. I mean, you got to take the original and put it by itself because nothing happens without that. But mm -mm. but as far as all the spinoffs and whatnot, Deep Space Nine is so much better than the rest. I, it's it is. aged better. Yeah, it's aged better than the other ones. It, it's I mean, not like, just the it's not just the age though. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. My apologies. No, it's not it's it's not just the age. It's it, it's the fact that it is Star Trek as well as not traditional star trek they delivered right. mm -hmm. the ability to bring the universe to one place without having to leave that place to a point where it got boring they did the mm -hmm. babylon 5 let's say formula i'm not saying it was babylon 5 i know the hypocrisy right, of right, that. Right, right. but they had the babylon 5 formula but they did it with star trek and that's something that right. no one has been able to deliver since well, let yeah. me ask this question. It, it was um, so well written. Oh, the sorry. Go ahead, guys. The, the characters were so fleshed out, all the way down to like tertiary characters, like mm -hmm. like um, Garrick, like Nog, Garrick, Garrick Nog, mm. uh, Damar, like all these characters that all had arcs, even though they weren't really important to the overall story. It was just amazing. Well, didn't the higher up say we really don't care about this show? Do whatever you want. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they they did. They didn't. They were just like. Yeah, okay, whatever. Because See, they so had, sometimes that's a good thing. Because they had next they had next gen and next gen was, you know, was the cash cow. And which kind of brings me to another question. Did you guys get hooked with DS9 immediately? Or were you kind of like me and I'm just like, nope, I did. The card's my captain. I don't give a crap about this deep space nine show. You're not gonna get me. No, I, I did all, all, immediately. I remember it was the, during the middle of the last, second to last or last season of TNG, they started uh, DS9 concurrently. It started in January, I believe, the first season, mm -hmm. uh, right in the middle of it. And and I couldn't understand why I was getting so much, like, like what are you talking about? It, that stinks. Uh, that's, uh, no, I, I loved that from the beginning. I, I mean, I, I don't understand what, why, took, why it took so long. In my unevolved brain at the time, I... <laughs> I was like, no, Star Trek's about exploring strange new worlds and boldly going where no one's gone before. I'm, I'm not watching the truck stop at the end of the universe show. It's stupid. Why did we bring Keith on again? I'm just trying to figure this out. Well, yeah, I was the same way. It basically, I it, it was, was great. we were trying desperately to be next gen. You know, the first season was was a little rough where they, they kept going to different planets, but it just didn't have the same effect because you know because you're in the little tiny shuttle and like 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 he said it's a truck stop in the universe yeah. you know but if but once it found its footing and it decided you know what we're not going to be next gen anymore then th then it really took off but some of that i mean you're right it, every show i think hits that rough first or second season even next gen did that but some of those episodes even in the first season like I, I forgot the name of it but it was like when they had that cardassian bring in for war crimes but he really wasn't Anybody who mm. did anything wrong, you he just wanted to he, die. He was yeah. a clerk, and he just wanted to bring it out. He was the one Cardassian that wanted to bring everything out, so that mm -hmm. Cardassian would yep. be exposed. It was right. uh, it was unbelievable. I mean, it, it, the whole story just took between mostly between him and uh, Kara, and it was, it was I love that episode. And and seeing early early rewatching earlier episodes and stuff from the first and second season, they're dropping clues as to what's going to happen season later. There was some some group of uh, refugees that were running from something called the Dominion. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And they just, that was a they, great. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but yeah, they were dropping hints as to what was going to happen. So clearly they were thinking. Yeah, I think the show really hit a stride when the the season finale where the enter the galaxy class ship explodes. And then mm. you know, like there, there's That's something bigger. Where Skeletor is the captain. They're trying uh, to, um, yeah, they're trying to rescue. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh, yeah. The, the, I think honestly, a lot of people don't give the 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 the, the pilot a lot of um, the pilot. props oh. because it literally shows it, it shows a point of view that it it, it destroyed the uh, legend issue in a way 
of the way people viewed Picard. Yes, Picard had mm. his demons when it came to the I Borg and Locutus, but when Benjamin got in his face and was holding back it. that rage because he caused the death of his fam of his wife, his yeah. ship, his friends, it showed that even though Picard did all these things as the like the captain of the Enterprise, he was still only human and he had repercussions for his actions. Mm -hmm. Yes, that and was that's the one thing mm -hmm. that the Picard season from uh, Shilman never learned how to deliver correctly. And that's the thing that angers me so much about, okay, forget Star Trek Discovery, because what I'd heard about it, I'm like, I'm not freaking going to watch that. But I said, Star Trek Picard, I might give that a chance, because we'll see again, if he's going to be, hopefully he will be, you know, the most interesting man in Starfleet. And it's like, okay, when I reflect back, this is what maybe I could have did better. This is the lesson that I learned from it. Because again, showing he's human, because that's the reason why we love that character so much, especially when he was Lacutus, because that was like against his will. And you know, he fought as hard, as hard, as hard as he possibly, you know, as possibly could. But it's like he's human. He makes, you know, he makes mistakes. But not only does he make mistakes, but he learns from those particular mm -hmm. mistakes. And in Star Trek Picard, all they had him as is just some uh, doddering old fool being yelled yeah. at by women swearing at him all the time. Yeah, and was, I'm yeah. like, this is not, this is not the Picard that I came to see. I refuse to no. live the life of that at, man I just saw. All. Exactly. This is not, this is not him. Mm -hmm. And yeah. as a fan, and I, and you guys can, I definitely want to hear your points of view on this. As a fan, knowing how much I loved watching Next Gen, how much Deep Space Nine pulled me in eventually. And, you know, the love and the reverence that I had for the original series, because it was just, it was so cheap. The effects were cheesy, but the writing was great. So you just, you kind of like had to love it. Even from Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, how freaking iconic that movie is. And all of that. And it's like Kurtzman took all that, wiped his ass with it, mm -hmm. and spit out Discovery and uh, Picard. So I just, you know, I don't know who wants to start first, but definitely give your feelings <laughs> how you feel about it. Well, I, I have one quick thing I'm going to say. This is a disclaimer. Uh, we at the lunch table do not appropriate nor condone the imagery of Kurtzman's bum. We apologize ahead of time for this. <laughs> I should have put a We do endorse yours, though. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> nice. I like you guys. You guys are great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, what else needs to be said about Kurtzman Trek? But I just wanted to quickly make a point about Benjamin Sisko. Um, Please that do. I, I find him the most compelling of all the captains. Yep. And I find I agree. the hybrid of Kirk mm. and Picard. He's got the pragmatism of Picard and he's got the uh the emotional um he's got that never say die Kirk thing as well. Mm -hmm. And he, mm. he will rely on either or depending on the situation. But I think the most important part of that character that I really loved and watched him grow and evolve was that he was a single dad mm -hmm. and and raising mm -hmm. a son mm -hmm. while commanding this fortress for lack of a better term at the end of the universe where you know he's he's basically he's stuck you know he's guarding this wormhole from an alien invasion he's trying to get bajor into the federation so he's being a mm -hmm. diplomat he's basically been tasked with somehow he's some kind of god or emissary to these people mm -hmm. uh, this is spiritual the ghost of the wormhole or whatever which is always a fun thing he's to got all this around. weight on his shoulders he's got his wife he's a widower mm -hmm. and then he meets uh he meets the the new woman there, uh, uh, Cassidy Yates. Cassidy, yep. mm -hmm. Cassidy Yates, who, who uh, also Penny, Penny Johnson yeah. is just awesome. I love Penny Johnson. So, um, and not well, only that, he sent her also even to jail for the Maquis help. So it was even that right. too. Like right. he actually made a lot of hard, hard choices with right. that. Right, right. And I just, right. his character was so well written and so well shaped, and and it and evolved over time. That the episode it chokes me up and really brings a tear to my eyes when he sings he sings the duet in the casino mm -hmm. of the last season the, mm -hmm. the best yet to come the best and is yet to come and, no, yeah and, just, and on top of that he's a brilliant talented man so um yeah i mean avery brooks that's awesome lorena that you had contact with him because uh he is like awesome 
<laughs> he's, he's just gone. and I'm sad he's, he's kind of gone. Yeah, he's he he was he really took that role as a heavy responsibility. He felt that it was his responsibility to bring his best, you know, to that role. Granted, he wasn't doing a lot of what other people were kind of expecting him to do, but he's like, at the end of the day, you know, I'm bringing my best to this role because he had reverence for the fact that he was playing a Star Trek captain. You know, it's kind of like the difference between like, say how Ben Affleck handled Batman and how Sparkles is, is, <laughs> is handling, you know, um, um, Batman, Robert Pattinson is handling Batman. Avery Brooks knew this character is one of the a Star Trek captain is one of the biggest parts of pop icon that that's that's mm -hmm. out there. You know, it's so it has to approach that with a kind of reverence. And he loved hearing from fans, you know, how much people, you know, love the show. And I would tell him, it's like, you know, I'm I'm ecstatic and honored. You let me run a fan club, you know, for me. And he said, there's people who just they they just, you know, they just love to see you. And you had people out there, and I'll I'll get into this side for a little bit. You had people out there that wanted him to play that role as a black man first and a character second. And he's just like, no, I'm a starship captain, Star Trek captain, who just so happens to be brown. That's the order of um of things. Well, he you know, there's it. some yeah, he oh, yeah. did. And it's like there's some parts of it that you know that you will see because somebody was like. I think this was um I don't know I think this was at a con is it a convention I think it was a convention, someone said well when is Star Trek going to cover the topic of racism and he's just like, why do you think I want to <laughs> play a part of something that I have to deal with every day? It's I saw just, that clip. Yeah, that was, it was awesome. Yeah. It was just like what what makes you think that that's the first thing that I want to do? It's just like there's all this other stuff that's out there. Why, why do we need to focus on that? Now they did bring it in in other portions with context to uh, Gabriel timelines. Yeah, they did. And that made perfect sense because they didn't ignore it, but they addressed it. But the right. fact that you have people who think that that's the only thing that he, that he should address. is just like, no, and that's the problem with the modern stuff. They're, they're going straight at it that way. You know, they had the episode far beyond the stars where he, Go, go they go back in time to the 50s yeah i remember that the one yeah, he directed that was a brilliant episode and that was amazing and you know nana visitors said he, like they thought he had was gonna have a nervous breakdown when he went into that state where he had the mm -hmm. you know, the cult, yeah yeah where he collapses and you know Cause the and he couldn't stop who, um yeah because the guy who, oh, i'm sorry edson no no i was saying that they even said he when, when even when the scene was cut he could he was so in that role in that moment that he couldn't stop yeah he couldn't stop like acting that way that was yeah, yeah was, it was it. him he was the that person that was him was and incredible. now that i remember okay i'm having fangirl memories here i got in touch with the guy who did the novelization of that episode and he was actually a black science fiction author and i'm really mad that i can't freaking remember his name right now i'm so sorry i'm so sorry but i remember i was in grad school and he had an email address on his website and i'm like oh, would you like to be interviewed for avery books his fan called blah 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 didn't think i'd hear anything back next day boom yeah wow. send me the questions and i'll send it back i'm like <laughs> <laughs> but I had asked him, you know, about about doing that novelization, and he was just like, he said, you know, he he absolutely he absolutely loved doing it. It was such a such a big deal. So it's a great yeah. story. It would have made a great motion picture, actually. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. Feature. Absolutely. Yep. God, this just shows. Just yet brings up again how crappy Kurtzman trick is. Oh, anyway, yeah. I, I mean, like he, a poor marksman, he keeps missing the target. Yeah, well, getting he, back that's to the thing he is he about... can't plagiarize good writing, right? He just plagiarizes ideas. Oh, true. Well, you have to yeah, care. exactly. You have to care about what you're dealing with, and he clearly right. doesn't care. Okay, you remember the second season of Discovery right, when they're now in the future? No, and I all of all well, right. okay. Let, let's let's just put it this way: all the enemies look like they're holding Mega Man blasters shaped like plungers. That's how bad. Right. This show looks. Are they dolls? You, know, you remember that one episode where 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 he gets where uh, Burnham Brave 
get sprayed with the gas, right? And then uh, Aldris Elba Light has to save her, and they're running away from those guys who are teleporting to shoot them. The, the weapons themselves look like plunger bottoms of Mega Man Blasters. They're bad. For oh the most expensive TV show ever made. I, I'm sorry. I'm just still tripping over how the Klingons looked in Discovery. That that uh, turned me. Uh, a- I made it three episodes in, and I was done. Like I'm like, why are we supposed to like this character who's mutinied, started a war, and killed her captain in three episodes, and got promoted for it, failing upward? Uh, Hold on. I'm gonna bring it right here because I know people say it. like I like that's the thing though. Like I couldn't even, like Kurt, oh, I I hate Kurt's my trick. I really do. Yeah, and so do I. I, I but um. Sh- Picard I, lasted four episodes. Picard, there you go. I I had the unfortunate. I saw it all the way through. Tried to cancel CBS All Access, and they said, "Oh, if you keep it, we'll give it to you for free for the next month." I'm like, okay. And after that finale, I I freaking I freaking canceled it. And then a month later, I get this begging email to uh, re up. I'm like, nah, I don't nah, I don't think so. Oh, what, what the, the hell is that? I'm sorry. How many? How much money per episode? No, 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 no. Look at these things. They're like, oh, no. like uh, plunger bottom right here. What the Mega hell? Man <laughs> blaster. And there's Eldris Alba Light. Somebody yeah. else God. said it. Somebody said what that looked like. It looks like a deflector dish thing on the front of the ship. Yeah, it does yeah. look like that. Yeah. If you turn it upside down, it's actually a. Uh, you know, when you're having a fondue, it's one of those mini fondue bowls. Oh, that's where you're happened. cooking up the oil. Yeah, there, there you go. So I you just, do fondue. I don't fondue. Can I just <laughs> say that the the blast? The, I mean, the, the phasers from original series look better. Yes, yes. and, 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 and they were on a much, 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 much tighter budget. Then yep. this, 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 the, is, oh God, yeah. This is but the 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 thing that bothers me across all of these types of treks when it comes to the weaponry is: Do you remember when you're watching TNG or you're watching DS9 or something like that? Set yeah. your phasers to stun is always the first thing. You right. don't want this set to kill. Right. They just pick right. up the weapons and use them. They they don't care if they're killing or not. So they're already going against the whole Starfleet narrative of how they're supposed to unite because they they're automatically up. using. You know what I mean? Even if they don't have a yeah. kill setting, yeah. turn up the power, right? They're actually set to like disintegrate. Yeah. So that people yeah, yeah, yeah. One shot from this will turn you into a red jello mold of sploosh. Like it's that gruesome. It's really that gruesome. You know what else? Uh in a lot of the oh. new shows suffer from this too. Just the look. The 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 it you know, they shoot these things in the raw <sighs> and, and they do very little color grading. Everything's like icy blue, desaturated, dark. I, I just can't stand that look. And everybody's doing it. Mm-hmm. It's. I think some of them tried to say, "Well, we want to show find something it. gritty." It's like you can do that, but at the same time, make it look alive. Like, for example, like the Joker. Yes, the Joker mm-hmm. movie that was gritty, but you had it was vibrant. You know, it was what? Yeah, vibrant. it was exactly. Yeah. It was. It was. It was vibrant. So I don't know how. It's just like, what are they cheaping out? On this, which I think that they, that they think that they are, but the, the, oh god, the art direction, this stuff is crap. Yeah, it's... yeah, no uh, attempt to make it look well. This is before the stuff from the '60s, so I mean, at least like with with Enterprise, they obviously are doing it with much more modern technology all around. Mm-hmm. But they're like, well, let's let's not out out tech what we're supposed to be behind. Whereas this, they got the. The, the, the hollow the hologram in, yeah. in, in, in interfaces yeah. and the where that come it, from? Yeah. yeah, they even have holodecks on Discovery, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I've been, I've watched reviews from Az and stuff and, and other mm-hmm. people, and it's well, like, you can yeah, break their they're... holograms with blinking in Discovery. So let's for, not forget that, right? But oh, okay. they have holodecks. In the, in, Remember uh, Georgia Mirror Mirror a Captain that as the mother figure for Discovery. Right? So then the hologram was doing the uh, psychoval test for her. she oh, was yeah. blinking her eyes at a certain frequency and caused the hologram doctor to uh, dysfunction and disappear. But how do they have all this tech in Kirk's Enterprise? Did what this stuff? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, oh didn't. God, I'm so glad I didn't freaking watch that. I show. didn't write this or the yeah, score drive. <laughs> no, because if you wrote it, it would have been a hell of a lot better <laughs> <laughs> than this crap. Oh my God! And yet, and yet they yell and cuss yep. us out about word is and phobes and and. Uh, and what and whatever because we don't because we don't like it. 
And I we don't swallow the, um, hook, line, and sinker. Therefore, you're a sexist. I think the story that came out about the WandaVision showrunner never having read comics or clear or says she can't even do it because yeah. um, she doesn't know which cell to look at is part and parcel of what's going on here. They're just hiring people who are underqualified. They don't appreciate the source material. They don't no. know what they're doing. That made my freaking head spin <laughs> off. I keep talking about this because it's true. Like I have, um, I'm probably going to grab a little bit later. I have like issue number 11 of Vision and the Scarlet Witch. The reason why I have that uh. comic is because Spider-Man in his black costume is on the front. Doctor Strange is figured in that comic book as well. So I'm thinking, hey, um, supposedly Luke Skywalker type of appearance. Okay, it's probably Spider Man, but maybe at the very least, it should be Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange yeah. is what I thought. Yeah, and they didn't even. I'm like, they're they're, they're gonna have to show Doctor Strange. This is they're gonna have to show Doctor Strange, and they freaking didn't. And I'm like, this makes no freaking sense. So when I saw that article and I read who the showrunner was, I'm like, you've got to be. Well, and she crazy. says that she didn't know who Mephisto was and that they agreed in the writer's room uh, that the big bad for the series was grief. No, what? no, no, no. That's a load of crap. That, that's a load that of crap. made me so angry. I'm just like, no. If you're going to make it be quote unquote grief, what's the personification of grief? So I expected at least from Mephisto to show up and say, you know what? Here's the bargain I'm going to make with you. Right. I can mm -hmm. bring all that yeah. back. But you're gonna have to give me this in exchange. Yeah, that's and the I, test. That's the test you have to go through. The uh, I'm, pretty, yeah. pretty for I'm pretty convinced that that's what's gonna happen in Spider-Man three. That yeah. that, the, that that's to Spider -Man. that'll show up. Yeah. There, the the other th the other thing that bothers me because Randy, you know, I went in deep. I don't know if any of you guys ever saw like the comic book roundtables when we broke stuff down when I covered one division intently. And the one thing that bothered me the most, I'm going to share this in a minute, is I got this leak from a friend, right? And I'm, I used to be a huge Funko collector. Right? I still have a lot of Funko Pops and stuff. But when, um, why is this not showing? What? There we go. Okay, cool. But they sent me this. And I know, I know Funko toy catalogs, all right? Oh. They, don't oh. make, they don't make Funko or exclusives unless they're in the show. Right. So if you look right. at the bottom right, who the hell does that look like if she didn't know who Mephisto was? Right. Why would you make a toy for a series? Yeah. Uh, if it, I, I, if you didn't know who it was, this is a load of crap right here because they wouldn't make this. I think she was a phantom showrunner. They just put her name on there. I don't think she had mm -hmm. much pull or call or anything. They, I don't. Mm. Think, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I go just ahead. think you know somebody else was dealing with all this stuff and they just kind of used her to. Once again, you know, the representation and the look, look how progressive we are. We gave this young girl a chance to show yeah. run. And blah, blah, blah. I would have to agree because I think, um, was it Gary on Friday Night Tights? Or someone had brought up this scenario where they said, what if you had somebody, you know, a female who's like a PA, you know, person, you know, PA on their production assistant. She's lower down, but knows the comics, knows all of the lore and could have ran this show a heck of a lot better you don't know who Mephisto is and comic book <laughs> people are make or keep mentioning who that is don't you think you should go and look up who Mephisto mm -hmm. is how does the <sighs> showrunner not know that they're putting little easter eggs of Mephisto throughout right. the episode that's what I don't get so, and it goes to prove it's just like you have mm -hmm. these fake people they're not geeks they don't care about our legends they don't care about it all because if they did you wouldn't drop these hints like this in the show for people who have read the comics to pick up on and you don't address it later on in the series. Yeah. It's like the anti Nick Meyer who at the <laughs> time didn't, didn't know or care about Star Trek. That's the show with the ears, right? You well, know, but, he, but he realized I'm going to be in charge of this. I better read up as much as I can. So mm -hmm. he watched the entire, the entire run of the original series. Yeah. Hard so, did the same thing. Hard yeah. didn't know anything about Star Trek, but he sat down and did his homework. Yeah, for uh, uh, Wrath of Khan, right? Exactly. Yeah. Watched all and, 79. Uh, yeah. and I would like to also add, awesome. though, I am canon now in the MCU, thanks to uh, Boner, because he uh, mentioned my name. He did. What? Ralph, Ralph Are you a Boner? fan of Steven Seagal? <laughs> there was that one scene that he actually mentioned that. So that may, And that's the weirdest thing ever, because a lot of people thought of me when they heard that. I'm like, how did they, what? And I'm like, yeah, that's right. I'm now canon in the MCU. 
uh, and South Park. Wow. You're canon in South Park, too. You're all over the place. All over, man. That's, That's a fat joke, people, isn't it? A lot of people love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> not denying it either. Thanks for the self-esteem there, Lorena. This is great. Hey, good. More fat oppression brought to you by the lunch table. If you're not eating the food, Stephen will. <laughs> okay. that, need, that needs to be a shirt. Uh, <laughs> folks, if you are not subscribed to Geek Time TV, you need to get off on it and subscribe. And shame on me because I yeah. have not. So there we go. And also make sure you hit that notification <laughs> bell to make sure you do that as well. And um, we're going to make sure we get the uh, social links for all of you guys in the description of the video too. So do you guys have anything coming up that you would like to uh, tell folks about? Yeah. Um, we're, we're constantly trying to figure out a niche, of course. And Edson does a lot of comic book reviews and, and um, I just, whatever springs into my brain i'll i'll do um edson and i were doing some nfl uh shows we're going to try to do a little more sports going forward um, mm -hmm. yeah. um and we are starting I, I got the idea a little late because there's 24 existing james bond films but i figured it out within 24 months so there's only like 20 mm -hmm. months to go till his 60th birthday on october 10th 2022 uh that was the night dr no was released so we're going to start doing a uh, we're doing live stream reviews of each Bond film. And the first one is going to be on March 25th or 6th, whatever that's 6th, 26th. It's a okay. Friday. Yeah. And Mark A. Altman from uh, Inglorious Trexperts 430 Movie Podcast and the author of uh, Nobody Does It Better, the official James Bond oral history book. It's an 800 page book, uh, is going to join us for the first one. Nice. So, um, yeah. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And uh, he's going to come back on a couple of them, Mark. So we're excited to get an, a Bond Authority on our very first stream. So Nice. And, of course, Tuesday night we do the, the live streams. But I think we might have to move because none of you are available on Tuesdays. Yeah. We might have to move days. Um, it's Everybody possible. I reach out to is like, ah, oh, Tuesday's rough for me. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, it's 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 possible for for a Tuesday. Um, contact me. We'll we'll see. We'd love to have you back. We'll see. I but I know, Fat leave. Steven, you're busy a lot, and Culture around. Casino is always busy, and Steve. You, 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 I can make I can make time, but you're making me sound like I've just said no to you, and I haven't said no. No, no, no you. Nobody says no. Everybody just says I'll try. No. Already booked and oh, well, I'm what just kidding. you can always do is you can okay granted it's not quite the same thing but you can always get us to uh like record offline and just import that into your that's true yeah because yeah i would love like i'm um, eventually i'm gonna do it today it's my first thing later on today but i'm just gonna have a live stream going i'm gonna do one of the playlists from Djibouti dubs because that commercial was awesome wasn't it that uh sticky buddy right now <laughs> on the queen's council come yeah, on yeah that got us a lot of laughs on the queen's council and i just want to have random people pop in and be like have you ever heard of this now but we're gonna watch commercials now for the next hour and just watch people lose their crap awesome. sorry oh, my cat at me. what what do you want <laughs> what sticky she, buddy oh god no she's um she's 14 sticky years buddy old was awesome. uh, she's, she's old she used to have a brother logan yes logan named i'm not making any jokes i'm not making any jokes but uh shit. he he passed away so uh we got another cat he's somewhere around here that's professor x but uh yeah this is uh this is this is kayla go over there uh, go, cool. over go over there sometimes she gets annoyed if i'm live streaming too much and then wants to Come sit on my lap and whine. Yeah, stay there. <laughs> <laughs> She's old. <laughs> yeah. So, folks, definitely please subscribe to Geek Time TV if you have not already. And, uh, guys, make sure you send me um, your social media links so I can drop those in the description box because you guys are woefully undersubbed right now at 223 subscribers. So we got to get that up because you guys have a amazing thing going um with uh with your show so eh, it's okay it's okay <laughs> it's, it's okay there's always room for improvement oh yeah i just i just want to say that we we got involved with the fandom right after right around the new year mm -hmm. um, 
and and so the last couple of months have just been awesome because we have been welcomed in so quickly and and everybody here is just so great and uh it, you know it, it pisses me off when i see hit pieces like that Reed ripley thing um because they couldn't be more wrong about the people in here well they you know they um they have an they have a reason yep. to have to do that they they do that to get clicks. Yeah, they do it because they have an agenda to push, and you know, God forbid, we shouldn't like what they tell us that we're you know supposed to uh, supposed to like. So it's 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 a pushback that we've been fighting against since let's see, maybe for me like about a year and a half or so ago. For for others like two, three, four years ago. It's like it's it's nothing new. It will keep coming up. They just get more sinister with the way they try to attack the fandom. But, you know, we're here. We're not going anywhere. And uh, you come at us with whatever you want, but it's not going to work. Yeah, it's I think I, I've yet to come across anyone who's been, you know, in any way mean or mean spirited. Mm -hmm. Everyone's very helpful. They're out there, but the thing is that the people that are welcoming outweigh the ones that just want drama. And the ones that want drama usually either get called out or they fade away and try somewhere else. But mm. we're, you're a welcome addition to this community from my point of view. I'm not saying I'm the gatekeeper. It's not like that. But you guys have a formula of not only being friends, but you guys have your own family uh, value attached the way you uh, deliver yourselves and give your content which is something a lot of people who want to get things mm -hmm. going with other people should look at because oh, you all deserve that. a chance to get a voice out well not you keith you're just i, I was just talking with the other guys but you know oh. you too <laughs> <laughs> I, I love you keith don't, don't worry I, I, this is the way i do if i don't joke with you then there's a problem with me but you, you guys seem very very honest I, I I've played a lot of sports. I'm used to locker rooms, so go out. Go, you can like, <laughs> hit me with everything you got. I can take it. It's it's oh. funny though, because you know we would sit around like going back to when we you know got the idea to do this, talking about all your what we watched with you guys, and we uh, one of the things we kept saying is they sound like we do. They sound like us. Mm. Like we should do the same thing. What do we you know? So here we are. Cool. Lorena, did they just say you sounded like just as white as they do? Isn't that kind of an insult right now? Um, considering Abu Nas couldn't figure out that. Oh I was yeah, dead, well, there, uh, there you go. It's okay. <laughs> See Abu, you get a pass this time. You get a pass. I mean, these are broken. <laughs> mm -hmm. That said, got you next time. Bye. Bye.